Right now on Channel 2 News at 530, our virtual town hall answering your questions about the coronavirus. Of course, with facts, not fear. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Michael Wooten. And I'm Kate Welsh. And once again today, we're dedicating this half hour to addressing your concerns. And once again, we have some expert help. Mm -hmm. Dr. Thomas Russo is here again in the studio with us to tackle your medical questions. He practices at the local Veterans Affairs Hospital and is an infectious disease professor and expert at UB and UBMD. We're also going to go live a little bit later on to Washington, D.C., because there are a lot of questions right now about the federal response. We're also going to get some expert financial advice in this half hour, so we have a lot to get to. And we do want to get right to it with this question right off the bat. It says, I keep seeing that we do not have enough hospital beds and machines and other equipment and staff to handle this if a lot of people get sick. So what is happening to fix that? This is really the big issue right now and what a lot of people are worried about. Will our health care system be able to handle this influx of patients? So the good news is that the governor announced today that this military ship, which a lot of people had heard of, I actually had never heard of it before, but it has 1,000 hospital beds and it's going to be able to dock downstate. That was a, an agreement between the governor and the president. Yeah, the USS Comfort, yeah. as it's called. Yeah, yeah. good naming. And uh, the U.S. Surgeon General also addressed this today, and here's what he had to say. When you look at modeling, again, you've got curves that look like Italy and curves that look like South Korea. The best way to not run out of ventilators or PPE is to make sure you drive down demand so you don't need them. And that's why, again, we're leaning into the next 15 days. Now, I want Americans to know we have a national strategic stockpile. We're working with public and private partnerships to increase production, but that's on the supply side. If our curve goes uh, the way of Italy, and there is every chance that we could run out of devices. And that's why it's so important that we lean into these mitigation efforts now, drive down demand, flatten that curve. Flatten the curve. Yeah, really speaking to why these restrictions that we have in place are in place in the first place. And if that's something that you're concerned about, having enough resources, then adhere to the guidelines that are being put out there. And we believe we're going to hear from Erie County Executive Mark Polencars at the top of the hour. We know here locally there have been discussions about how to free up more hospital beds. Right. Um, do you take other facilities in the area that are maybe closed now and try to reopen them? Uh, so we'll see what new insights we get yeah, on again, that front. More preparedness. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. Let's get to a question right now that we have uh, for Dr. Russo and his take on this. So a viewer asked us, doctor, should regular doctor appointments be canceled? So there may come a time uh, where that is ordered, but for now, Dr. Russo, is it a good idea for people to postpone elective surgeries and just regular appointments if they can do that? I think it is, um, particularly canceling those elective surgeries because what that will do is that will free up hospital beds. And as we just heard, this is one of the potential concerns. Um, that way there'll be more beds available that are acutely ill on individuals that need them. With regards to ambulatory appointments, I also think it's prudent that if you are doing well and you really don't need to see your uh, physician in the outpatient office, that'll be beneficial really on two fronts. It'll, one, help you practice social distancing, less interaction if you don't have to go into a venue where there'll be other individuals that'll be in place, and two, for your physician, that'll free up appointment slots, so if there are people that have greater need of the developed and acute illness, uh, then the physician will be able to see them. Yeah, and we'll see again if this is gonna become something that's mandatory. Dr. Russo, thank you. We'll get back to you in just a moment. Getting into another question now. I keep hearing that we are all going to go into quarantine. It's just a matter of time. Any truth? Well, the governor tried to shoot down these rumors today. The rumors and how they spread, and I'm going to be quarantined. I'm going to be locked out. They're not going to allow me to leave my house. I better stock up on groceries. That's not going to happen. It's a deep breath. We know what is going to happen here. People will get ill, they will resolve. People who are vulnerable, we have to be careful. But the panic and the fear is wholly disconnected from the reality. This leads into something that we have also been hearing a lot, where we talk about bringing you facts and not fear, and people saying sometimes those facts can make you a little bit fearful because yeah. there is so much coming in. So a kind of a good message in that way today to say, don't panic, but sometimes people are having 
trouble with that. Yeah, a natural reaction right. in some cases. So there were a couple of big announcements besides that uh, that came out of the governor's news conference today. First, you have this mandatory statewide requirement that no business can have more than 50% of its workforce report to work outside of home. So in other words, for all non-essential businesses, at least half of the employees must be working from home or they must just be staying home if they're not able to work. Again, there are exemptions to that um, for, you know, obviously important uh, jobs in the context of what's happening. Also, you can see the bottom tweet there. The governor joined governors in Pennsylvania, Connecticut and New Jersey to temporarily close all indoor portions of retail shopping malls, amusement parks and bowling alleys effective at eight tomorrow night. Were and any of those places still open? Right. Obviously, the malls were, but bowling alleys and and the other places. And again, people have so many questions about, well, what about this and what about this? And what about this? So it kind of makes clarity for people, mm -hmm. which I think is so important now as well. And all the governors doing the same thing they right. talked about is important, at least for these four states, because sure. the governor addressed this today. He said, if, if I take an action in a small geographic area, if people don't like that action, they can just, you know, go to go the to other Jersey. spot. Right. Exactly. So they need to have this coordination. Yeah, exactly. Another question now from a viewer. Some people are wearing gloves to protect themselves. I've seen it at grocery stores even. Is that good advice? And we have just the person to respond, of course. So Dr. Russo, we know that hand washing, of course, we talk about it so much and it really is such a big key. Also hand sanitizer in a pinch, cleaning surfaces. But what about this idea of wearing gloves when you're out and about? Yeah, I, I don't think that's a very good idea at all. And the problem is that gloves cannot be cleaned, uh, unlike your hands. So really, the best advice the is to forego the gloves. Not necessary. They'll just get contaminated if there happens to be some um, virus that you touch in, in, a, uh, in a surface. And uh, uh, just go with straight hand washing. That's the best way to go. And let me ask you too, because the same person who asked this question about uh, the gloves also talked about children and the t challenge of telling children to keep their hands out of their mouth and out of their face and you know follow those kinds of directions, particularly if they're really small. Uh, any advice in that regard for parents? Sure, well, it, it is hard and it's, uh, for those of us that have children, it's difficult for us to get to, for them to do lots of things. And, uh, <laughs> but I, you know, this is an educational moment. So spending a little bit of time with them, maybe making a game out of it uh, in terms of the benefit of washing hands. Uh, perhaps if you have the luxury of having some hand sanitizer, that might be a little easier than soap and water, but nonetheless, uh, try very hard to uh, get them to uh, have nice hand hygiene. Right, make it fun, make it a game, maybe. Dr. Russo, thanks. All right, so we keep getting also a lot of questions about salons and barber shops. And we're going to pose this to you as well, Dr. Russo. So if you were texted us this, I am a hairdresser at JC Penney Salon, and I would like to know why they have not closed all the salons in New York State. We're very close to clients, and I think it should be mandatory that they close. It's hard to imagine an industry um, that is in closer contact with the public. Um, than people who are cutting hair and doing other jobs like that. What do you say to people? Should these folks be worried about their jobs? Yeah, I think that's a very reasonable concern. And in fact, some states have closed uh, barbershops, uh, nail salons, tattoo parlors, uh, et cetera. Uh, you know, the definition of close contact, which can increase the risk of disease, is being within six feet for uh, maybe five or ten minutes. And I think we could all imagine that would readily happen in those various scenarios. So, uh, at this time in New York State, uh, those particular businesses remain open. I think a few bits of advice for the individuals that are involved. First of all, for clients, uh, if you're sick, please stay home or if you've been in contact with someone that's sick, likewise, you should stay home because it's possible that you uh, may be asymptomatic or at the early stages of infection infectious. Now, for the people that are working in these businesses, um, I think that uh, probably if you have uh, access to masks, this might be a good moment to use them since you're going to have a much higher exposure than the average person walking around and you'll be in close contact with individuals that are potentially infectious. So important, doctor. Thank you. Yes, some good advice there. And we do know that a lot of people are working. They have to keep working. And a viewer asked this question, very simple. What daycare resources are there? And we talked to just the person about that. 
many parents that did use childcare um, are working from home now. So we, we do believe that there are spaces that are available. Um, and we are working very hard with, um, you know, with Western New York to um, keep those options, um, you know, alive. And something important to uh, note too, during the city of Buffalo's daily briefing today, we heard from the mayor that some local colleges are stepping up to help with this need for child care as well, including the Buffalo State Child Care Center, University at Buffalo Child Care Center, and Erie County Community College, uh, city, north and south campuses. This as is well. going to be an evolving thing as they try to find that capacity. It is, and trying to adapt really by the hour, honestly. Yeah, yeah. No doubt.